A Narrow Escape by Lord Dunsany. It was underground, in that dank cavern down below Belgrave Square, the walls were dripping. But what was that to the magician? It was secrecy that he needed, not dryness. There he pondered upon the trend of events, shaped destinies, and concocted magical brews. For the last few years, the serenity of his ponderings had been disturbed by the noise of the motor bus, while to his keen ears there came the earthquake rumble, far off, of the train in the tube, going down Sloan Street. And what he heard of the world above his head was not to its credit. He decided one evening, over his evil pipe, down there in his dank chamber, that London had lived long enough, had abused its opportunities, had gone too far, in fine, with its civilization, and so he decided to wreck it. Therefore, he beckoned up his acolyte from the weedy end of the cavern, and, Bring me, he said, the heart of the toad that dwelleth in Arabia, and by the mountains of Bethany. The acolyte slipped away by the hidden door, leaving that grim old man with his frightful pipe. And whither he went, who knows but the gypsy people, or by what path he returned. But within a year he stood in the cavern again, slipping secretly in by the trap while the old man smoked, and he brought with him a little fleshy thing that rotted in a casket of pure gold. What is it? the old man croaked. It is, said the acolyte, the heart of the toad that dwelt once in Arabia and by the mountains of Bethany. The old man's crooked fingers closed on it, and he blessed the acolyte with his rasping voice and claw-like hand uplifted. The motor bus rumbled above on its endless journey. Far off, the train shook Sloan Street. Come, said the old magician, it is time. And there and then they left the weedy cavern, the acolyte carrying cauldron, gold poker, and all things needful, and went abroad in the light. And very wonderful, the old man looked in his silks. Their goal was the outskirts of London. The old man strode in front, and the acolyte ran behind him. And there was something magical in the old man's stride alone, without his wonderful dress, the cauldron and wand the hurrying acolyte, and the small gold poker. Little boys jeered till they caught the old man's eye. So there went on through London this strange procession of two, too swift for any to follow. Things seemed worse up there than they did in the cavern, and the further they got on their way towards London's outskirts, the worse London got. It is time, said the old man, surely. And so they came at last to London's edge, and a small hill watching it with the mournful look. It was so mean that the acolyte longed for the cavern, dank though it was, and full of terrible sayings that the old man said when he slept. They climbed the hill and put the cauldron down, and put therein the necessary things, and lit a fire of herbs that no chemist will sell, nor decent gardener grow and stirred the cauldron with the golden poker. The magician retired a little apart and muttered. Then he strode back to the cauldron, and, all being ready, suddenly opened the casket, and let the fleshy thing fall in to boil. Then he made spells. Then he flung up his arms. The fumes from the cauldron, entering in at his mind, he said raging things that he had not known before, and runes that were dreadful. The acolyte screamed. There he cursed London from fog to loam pit, from zenith to the abyss, motor bus, factory, shop, parliament, people. Let them all perish, he said, in London pass away, tram lines and bricks and pavement. The usurper is too long of the fields. Let them all pass away, and the wild hares come back, blackberry and briar rose. Let it pass, he said. Pass now, 
pass utterly. In the momentary silence, the old man coughed, then waited with eager eyes, and the long, long hum of London hummed as it always has, since first the reed huts were set up by the river, changing its note at times, but always humming. Louder now than it was in years gone by, but humming night and day, though its voice be cracked with age, so it hummed on. And the old man turned him round to his trembling acolyte, and terribly said as he sank into the earth, You have not brought me the heart of the toad that dwelleth in Arabia, nor by the mountains of Bethany.